Boy, I did not want to record this tutorial. It, I've been dreading it for a while. I've been putting it back, but I'm finally doing. I'm finally doing an auction house tutorial. A lot of people have been asking for it. Um, I think I was the first person to do an auction house. Um, back in Dungeon Simulator. Um, I thought it was really cool. A lot of people have been asking it. And a lot of people have been doing it since then. Um, so yeah, here's a finally. I'm doing a tutorial on how to do it. Now this tutorial will be classified as an advanced tutorial. If you don't know, advanced tutorials from me meaning that you sh you should have relatively good knowledge on housing. Um, you should have probably at least done a few of my tutorials. You should probably semi know what you're doing. Um, cause if you're not, you'll probably have a lot of issue. You'll probably need help. And, uh, you know, you, you gotta get experience before you do complex stuff, but I'm just gonna get right into it. I'm gonna start blabbering. So first part is you're going to need to watch my player IDs tutorial. Okay. So technically you don't need to go watch that video. I'll go over it real quick in this video. However, I won't be showing you the fancy stuff like the join messages. I'll just show you the base on giving players an ID. So we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna go to the housing menu. This is based off the new update. We're recording this new update. Go to systems, go to event actions, player join. Here on away, put one conditional. Inside this conditional, we're gonna check if the player stat player ID is equal to zero. This means that they're joining for the first time and they don't have a player ID set up. In the if actions, we're gonna increase the global stat player IDs by one. Again, that's a global stat. We're gonna set change player stat. We're gonna set player ID equal to that global stat using stat.player slash global stat or sorry, player IDs. Oh my god, stat.global slash player IDs in per, uh, percent signs. And that's it. This is for the fancy stuff. This is all you need for this tutorial. Um, if you want the fancy stuff, go watch the other tutorial. I'm not going to go over it here. So now when you leave and rejoin your house, if you're the first person to join, you should have the player ID 1. Now we can continue on with the tutorial. So first, I'm just going to show you the auction house, and then I'll go into actually making it. This will be real quick. We have a timer here that counts down um, by 2, just because uh, that's how the holograms work on housing. They count down by every 2. Sometimes it does it bugs out and goes 3. Um, but yeah, I have a little pressure plate here. It just sets the values to 0. So the auction house will start. Um, there we go. The it will say the auction has started for all players you are bidding for. It will say the item name. You can do slash auction to join, and the bidding starts at $2,000. When you do the slash auction, it will tell you about the auction house, tell you what you're bidding for. There's an NPC here that says the current bidder is player number zero. The current bid is zero. The next bid is 2000 and the time left before the auction ends is 10 seconds. We can click on this guy to bid, and it will say to everyone that player one just bid. But it'll also say that you bid. Now we can't bid again because we are only we are currently the top bidder. You can see that the current bid is now two thousand. The current bidder is number player number one, which is me. The next bid is three thousand, and the time will go down to zero. Once the time goes down to zero, our coins get taken away, as you can see on the okay the scoreboard. I didn't okay. It looks like our coins didn't take away. We'll look at that one when I'm showing you the code. See what went wrong there. But we did get our item and we got teleported out. Yeah, that's pretty simple. That's really all it is. Of course, with a bunch more people, it's a lot more fun and it's a lot more interactive. So we're just going to get into it right now. I just want to showcase we have for this tutorial, I'm just using three items to show you. You can do it with more items as a reward. I'm just showing you Emerald, which is the item number three, Beacon, which is number one, and Sharp Sword, which is number two. Um, it'll randomly choose from these guys. Anyway, let's get started. So first, we have a area here. We have a region. So what I did is I just took a wand and I selected this side and this corner. Oops, this corner. Then I went to the housing menu, systems, regions, and I just created an auction house region from this. Actually, I called it auction, not auction house. Inside here is a NPC. In this NPC, we have the trigger function bid, and there's a hologram above it, which I'll show you right now. So we have the auction master text that you can see at the top. We have, current, we have current bidder, which is um, Andy player, and then the number sign, and then we use the global stat, stat.global slash current bid ID. The next line is current bid for the current bid. The next line after that is next bid for the global stat next bid. And then after that is the time left. We're using auction TL, which I'm having stand for auction time left. That's pretty much it for the actual inside and building of the uh, auction house. Um, we do have this hologram here if you want to have a time display. Um, I'm using stat.global slash auction M for, mi for the minutes. And I'm using stat.global slash auction S for the seconds. And in here, I just set them both to zero, which will just start it for me so I can show you testing. And you might want to do that in your house, test, only house for testing too. Anyways, we're going to get started. Okay, before you all meet, we are on Housing Editor right now, but I'm going to explain real quick. So a lot of people have said that Housing Editor for my tutorials is not good. And while I agree, and I don't want to do that on the non-advanced tutorials, the simple ones, really advanced stuff will take me so long to go through each of the actions that these videos will probably take up to 30 or 40 minutes. It's so much easier if I just show you on Housing Editor. You don't have to get the mod. You don't have to go to the website. I just want to show you it so I can explain as it goes, and you can literally copy it down. 
basically these are actions that you just import this is play sound this is send a chat message this is a conditional these are the conditions these are inside the if actions and these are inside the else actions yeah i'm gonna try to explain it as we go but yeah it just it helps so much with the tutorials just please just hear me out but yeah without further ado i'm just gonna get started so in the start action or start function start auction function this is the function that's actually triggered for all players when the action auction starts. So we just play a sound. We let them know that the auction house has started. And depending on the auction item, so global stat auction item, which I'll show you how it is defined later, it tells you what item we're bidding for. So if it equals one, then we'll let them know that they're bidding for uh, the beacon, number two, sharp sword, number one, em or number three, emerald. And then we'll send the rest of the messages telling you can do such uh, auction to join. Um, and then we'll just do an empty character and then we'll just set auction TL to 30. This is for the time limit. That's important. Just don't miss that. Um, we're going to go into the next function now. That's very simple. And auction. This is also triggered for all players. We have a conditional here and inside the conditions, like I showed you earlier, we have a within region. So if the player is within the region auction, meaning that they were inside the auction, then we'll teleport the player out. So this is just teleporting the player to a location that's outside of the auction house this could be spawn this could be whatever you want and then after this we'll set the players in auction stat to zero we'll let them know with some chat messages that the auction house has ended just to show you the message because it kind of cuts off on housing editor this is what it says it just says the player number and then we use stat.global slash current bid id has one and spend stat that play oops sorry stat.global slash current bid those are the global stats we're using just copy that down if you want okay so back on housing editor here, because it's just ending the auction, I just play a little fun sound. And then this is the part where we check if they've won the auction. So if the player ID is equal to the current bidder, meaning that the auction has ended and that the the winner, um, it finds the winner. So if the winner's ID is equal to the player ID that you're sending the function to, then we'll tell them that they won the auction, play a sound. Um, otherwise, we'll exit. So we'll stop any of the rest conditions from running. So once again, if they're the winner, We'll let them know, otherwise stop. And if they're the winner, then we'll continue. So in here, if auction item is equal to one, then we'll give them the auction number one item. I just use this for importing. Just ignore this. Just replace this with the auction that you want or the auction item that you want using the give action function or sorry, action. Give item action, sorry. Um, here we have checking if the auction item is equal to two, which if it is, then we'll give them the number two item. And then same thing with number three item. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the auction timer. So for the auction timer, we're going to check if the auction global stat auction is equal to one, which if it is, then auction time left should research subtract one, meaning that the time left on the actual auction is going down. If the auction is one, which means it's active, uh, by the way, I'm just setting auction, the global stat auction to one, that means it's active. If it's zero, it's not active. Um, you'll see it as not active in a second. Um, so if it is active and the timer is less than or equal to zero, which means that the auction house should end, then we'll trigger the function end auction for all players. And we'll just reset the auction to not active. Um, we'll reset the minutes for the next auction to 20 and the seconds to zero. So auction set zero. Auction M for auction minutes set zero. Or sorry, set, set 20. Auction S or auctions, or no, it should mean auction S um, for auction seconds set zero. So here's the calculation for auction minutes and seconds. So if the auction minutes for global set is greater than or equal to one, but the seconds is less than or equal to zero, and there is not an active auction, that means that seconds is zero, but there's still minutes. So let's set the seconds to 59 and subtract one from the minutes. In the next conditional, we have to check um, if auction seconds is greater than or equal to zero, and auction is equal to... Actually, there's a little mistake here. We can actually do can do this that should work auction s is greater than zero meaning that there is um still seconds left in the auction and the auction is not currently active then we'll subtract one from auction seconds and then here's where we start the auction so if auction minutes is less than or equal to zero auction seconds is less than or equal to zero and the auction is not active um which means equal to zero then we'll set it to active. We'll set the next bid to 200. We'll set the global bid ID, or sorry, the current bid ID to zero, the current bid to zero, and the auction item to, to a number between one and three. I know it says four. The way uh, random in placeholders work is it sets the minimum and the maximum plus one. So this is actually one to three. And then we'll trigger the function start auction for all players. Okay, so this is the join auction function. 
join auction is triggered when wherever you want the player to join the auction. I'll just show you this after too, but I'm just going to explain the code real quick. So first we have a conditional checking if the auction is equal to one, which means it's active. Then we'll teleport the player to a position inside the auction. We'll play a sound just for fun. These are just for fun stuff. And we'll, we'll let them know. Oops. We'll let them know that welcome to the auction. You can bid on rare items, blah, blah, blah. And then we'll set the player stat in auction to one. Otherwise, so this is the else actions in this conditional. We'll let them know that the auction house is currently not open and just play a sound and we'll land sound. And we'll exit. I forgot to mention, make sure you exit. This is very important. And then similar to the thing before, we check what item they're bidding on or what auction item it is. And then depending on that, we'll let them know which item they are bidding on. And then we'll end just the message there with like an empty character. We are almost done. We are now in the bid function. So this is the happens when you bid on the item, which I'll also show you where you would want to trigger. Inside here, we have a global stat requirement that checks if auction is equal to zero, meaning that the auction is not currently active. So we'll let them know that they're not that it's not open, um, and we'll uh, just play a sound and we'll exit. Very important that we exit. We have another conditional right after it that says if the current bid ID is equal to the player ID, meaning that they are currently the top bidder. Now this part is pretty much optional depending on if you want to do it or not. You can allow for players to bid on top of themselves, but I think that's kind of stupid. So we just have a thing here that checks if they are currently the top bidder, which if they are, let them know that they're top biller, or top bidder, sorry. We'll play a sound and we'll exit out of this. Now this is the big conditional after this. We'll check if the coin stat, now this can be whatever stat you want to use for currency. I'm just showing you with, with coins. If you're using gold, use gold. If you're using diamonds, use diamonds, whatever you want. We check if that's greater than or equal to the stat.global slash next bid. So if they have enough money to bid over the top one, then we'll reset the time limit auction TL set 25. This is up to, this is up to you and the number you want to do. We'll set the current bid ID to the player's ID. We'll set the current bid to the next bid and then we'll increase the next bid by a thousand. We'll play a sound and we'll just let them know that they currently bid the specific amount here. I'll just put this in Minecraft chat so you can see it real quick. Auction house, you just bid stat.global slash current bid. And then we have the bid broadcast function triggered for all players. And here's the bid broadcast broadcast function and we are all done. Once, I, once we finish this, of course, we have a conditional that checks if they are within the region auction, which if they are, then we'll continue the code. Um, this can actually be in here. I don't really know why I put it out here. I'm just gonna keep it like that. Uh, I just kind of prefer it like that. If they are not within this region, then we'll exit stopping the rest of the code from running. Now this is optional for you. In my opinion, if the player is not in the auction, they shouldn't have to see auction messages. That's why it basically tests if they're in the auction or not. Then we'll just send a message in chat, meaning that when someone bids, it'll send it for all players, saying that the player with the stat.global slash current bid ID just bid stat.global slash current bid. And that is it. Import that into your game, and I'll show you real quick on where you want some of the functions to go. So in the NPC, you're going to want to have the trigger bid. Now, the that this can be whatever you want. You can have a separate NPC for this. You can have an item that triggers this function. Basically, just know that this is the function you want to trigger when the player is to bid on the item in the auction house. The join auction function should be triggered, triggered anywhere you want the player to join the um, auction. For this tutorial, I have a command slash, called slash auction that just triggers the function join auction. And finally, arguably one of the most important parts, go to functions and in the auction timer, right click on this and in the new automatic execution, set this to 20 ticks. So 20, um, I have it set to 20 already. Oops, I put an A at the end, but that's fine. Basically, this is the replacement for poison loops. So instead of using a poison loop, you can just use this. And if we set it to 20 ticks, it'll only happen every second, which is our timer. So it'll happen every second. It will do the timer thing every second. It'll do its job, basically. Real quick, regarding the issue that I missed where the player does not remove their coins, you're going to want to go to the end auction function. And inside this, this uh, second conditional, where we check if the player won the auction or not, we're going to set their coins and subtract it by the global stat current bid ID. So if the player won the auction, then we'll remove their coins based on the, oh, sorry, not current bid ID, current bid. Sorry, I messed that up there. This is why you gotta you guys got to watch the entire video, because sometimes at the end, I uh, go back to stuff. 
So yeah, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I know people have been asking about this for a while. If you need any help, join the Discord and let me know there. Actually, no, don't ping me there. That's annoying. Um, just ask for help in regards and I might respond or someone else I can help you will. If you're new to the channel, I do housing content, housing tutorials, stuff like that. Make sure to subscribe. The goal is 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I don't think we'll make it, but that's okay. But yeah, I'm going to end it here. Thanks for watching. See ya.